Now let me talk about the orthogonality of eigenvectors, which is a very, very helpful and important uh, property of eigenvectors that will help me later on in uh, determining the response, post response of multi degree freedom systems. Uh, let's set some ground rules here first, basic concepts for, for example, first we know that for any matrix, any square matrix, there are two sets of eigenvectors, left and right eigenvectors. So matrices have left and right eigenvectors. Now, symmetric matrices left and right eigenvectors and symmetric matrices Concentrate on this part, symmetric matrices, because most of dynamic systems have symmetric matrices, especially linear systems. Um, those eigenvectors are orthogonal with respect to the matrix uh, eigenvectors. What is orthogonality? For any vectors, let's say we have vectors A and B. What does it mean when A and B are orthogonal? It means that if those two vectors are orthogonal, The dot product of these two vectors must be zero. Two vectors basically are orthogonal in space, A and B. Their dot product is going to be zero. But those are directly orthogonal uh, vectors. Now, I'm saying here that my eigenvectors are orthogonal with respect to their matrix, okay. which means that, first of all, let me, um, let's define vector u as a b and vector v as C and D. Now U dot B is A times C plus B times D. Okay. Or I can do something uh, else through matrix or vector multiplication. If I take u transpose times v vector multiplication the transpose of u is a b switch rows and columns so the first column becomes the first row and v is b c and d 
Now perform the net multiplication AC plus BD. Okay, so I can write instead of writing U dot V, I can write it as U transpose times V. And this is also a dot product form. So now for orthogonal uh, uh, vectors, the dot product is directly zero. But for a eigenvector, if we have a matrix A and this matrix A, let's say, has uh, two eigenvectors P1 and P2, then A times P1 and here P2 transpose. So it's instead of multiplying P2 uh, transpose times P1, just like we did here, this, this is the direct dot product. This is not necessarily zero, but if I insert A here in between, this will lead to zero. And this is what's known as orthogonality of eigenvectors with respect to the system matrix. Also, if I take the eigenvector, multiply it, dot product by itself, P1, this will not be zero. So P1 transpose A, P1 is not zero. P2 transpose A, P2 is not zero, but P1 transpose A, P2, different vectors, these are zero. So I can write this as P in general, P transpose I times a times p j this is equal to zero if i is not j for example one and two then that means the dot product is zero if i and j are equal it will be a non-zero value delta i j when i equals j and delta is a non-zero value so this is what's known as the orthogonality of eigenvectors their dot product through the matrix is orthogonal if they are different the product is zero if they are equal the product is not zero it's some number and usually it's the eigenvalue and let me show you an example to prove this concept now let me consider this simple two by two matrix one negative point five negative point five and one if you go ahead and calculate the eigenvectors of this matrix, there will be P1, simple 1, 1, and P2 is 1 and negative 1. I chose this matrix carefully so that the numbers are simple to perform some calculations here <clears throat> but this applies also to all matrices now let me see if these eigenvectors are orthogonal with respect to matrix A for example if I take the 
product of P1 transpose A P2. These two vectors are supposed to be orthogonal. So that should be the transpose of P1 is 1 and 1. The matrix A is 1, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 and 1. And P2 is 1 and negative 1. Now let's perform matrix multiplication. 1, 1. And let me multiply this matrix by this vector. We have 1 plus 0.5. That's 1.5. And then for the second element, negative 0.5 and negative 1, that's negative 1.5. Now multiply these two vectors, 1 times 1.5 1 is 1.5, 1, 1 times negative 1.5 1 is zero. Let's try it the other way around. Let's try P2. Now transpose times A times P1. P2 transpose is 1, negative 1. A matrix is 1, negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 and 1. 1 and 1, that's P1, equals 1, negative 1, one minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, and second row, minus 0 0.5 plus 1 is also 0 0.5. First element times the first, 1 times 0.5 is 0.5, and then negative 1 times 0.5 is negative 0.5, and that is 0. Now let's make sure that if I multiply P1 times P1, I get a non zero value. So P1 is 1 and 1, and 1, negative 0.5. Negative 0 0.5, 1 and 1 and 1. I would get 1, 1 and <coughs> 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 plus 1 is also 0 0.5, and that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, that's one. <coughs> Try P2. One negative one. One negative zero point five. Negative zero point five. One. One and negative one. Equals. One negative one. One plus point five is one point five, and minus point five minus one is minus one point five. One point five plus one point five that is three, and actually you will find out that this one and three these are the eigen values of this matrix. A. So, <clears throat> there's something important here now. Let me see what I can do with this uh, property. If I take the matrix A, I multiply it by the 
two eigenvectors eigenvector P1 arrange both eigenvectors and one matrix P2 and then on the other side of A I will add the transpose of the vectors this is P1 transpose and this is P2 transpose I flipped the vectors, the column became the row now what's going to happen here the first element is going to be first row matrix column first row P1 transpose times the matrix A times column 1 which is P1 the second element is going to be first row P1 transpose times matrix A times the second column which is P2 the element over here is second row P2 transpose times the matrix A times the first column P1 and then for the last element here second row is P2 transpose times A times P2 and let's inspect these uh, values P1 P1 that's a non-zero number right P2 P2 is non-zero P1 P2 P2 and P1 these are orthogonal so this is zero and this is zero so I ended up with a matrix um, let's call this lambda 1 0 0 lambda 2 and let's call this matrix B I started with a full matrix A and I ended up with a matrix B that is diagonal matrix and this is extremely important so I can use eigenvectors to convert matrices from full populated matrix to a diagonal matrix through this process if I call this matrix of eigenvectors let's call it matrix P then this is P transpose this is the transpose of the eigen of uh, the matrix of eigenvectors then P transpose A times P is diagonal Generally, the diagonal elements are going to be the uh, eigenvalues, but not necessarily, depending on the, uh, how we normalize the eigenvectors, but always I will have values on the diagonal, and off diagonal, all values will be zero, and that's what's called a diagonal matrix. And this is extremely important now when we move on to uh, to try to determine the response of multi-degree freedom systems uh, to a force, certain general input force.